What's up guys? It's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and today we are going to talk about tarantula care for extreme weather. Um, I have Spidey, my G. Rosea right here. Um, she is due for a tank cleaning, but I am waiting on my bathroom to be remodeled, so that's going to be in a few weeks, but I will do a tutorial for that. We just moved, so we're adjusting to the new place and I'm letting her settle down and get comfortable so she doesn't get too stressed out. And then we'll do the tape cleaning. Um, so sometimes you just can't help how those kind of things work out, but we just try to be prepared as much as we can. So that kind of goes along with this week's topic, um, preparing for extreme weather and how to take care of your tarantulas in extreme weather. And I realized that I should have definitely done this video months ago during winter, um, cause now it's actually getting kind of nice. But um, I think this is still going to be relevant and we could revisit this topic um, when it starts to get weird again with the weather. Um, but I was really inspired to make this video because I came across one of my favorite channels, The Tarantula Collective, where Richard Stewart talked about this um, topic and I really thought it was an awesome thing to do. So I wanted to share some information that I got from him and I'm going to link his video below too because you should totally watch it. His filming is amazing, his information is amazing, and that is just a great channel for other tarantula care. But anyway, if you are new to this channel, um, I put out videos every Tuesday on Tarantula Tuesday. So does the Tarantula Collective. They also do Tarantula Tuesday, so that's fun. And this includes tarantula facts, weird stuff about my own tarantulas, anything tarantula related and tarantula care. So if you're into that, you can subscribe below. So tarantulas in general are pretty hardy. Um, even if you are a beginner, there are a lot of really, really good beginner tarantulas that can withstand a lot of things. Tarantulas have been around forever, have gone through many changes in the world, and they are still here. So from an evolutionary standpoint, tarantulas are a pretty genius design. However, despite how hard they are, and despite how much tarantulas have actually survived throughout the course of the world, they can actually be incredibly fragile and sensitive to extreme weather. And so whether you are a beginner or somebody who's more advanced in tarantula keeping, it is really important to be responsible and ready for anything. Um, the key to being a good tarantula owner is having a backup plan for anything, no matter what percentage chance there might be. Um, I think that if you're living in pretty stable parts of the world where the temperature or the weather is stable and you are able to afford heating and things like that or cooling stuff, um, you will probably not have to worry too much about this stuff. But I'm going to say that I've seen in tarantula groups that sometimes during the winter, freak accidents happen, generators fail, um, our heating systems fail, and things happen. People lose their entire collections and it's really, really sad. So it's important to um, make sure that we have backup plans and things that we can do in case of emergencies. So one thing that a lot of beginners don't know um, is that tarantulas cannot regulate their body temperature. So they're not like dogs and they're not like cats. They don't have the ability to warm themselves up. They can't really absorb heat like other animals or like we do. So they work on a completely different system. And a lot of us keep our tarantulas in our basement because it's away from the rest of the house. If we live with other people who don't wanna see tarantulas, um, it's a safe place to put them. And it's also out of the way. It tends to be safer if you have pets and kids and things like that. However, it's important to know that basements are also quite a bit cooler than the rest of your house. So generally, people will say that for most species, room temperature or a temperature that you're comfortable in is okay. Um, like for example, I'm wearing a short sleeve t-shirt and I'm comfortable, so it's probably comfortable for Spidey. However, if I'm in a room where I feel like I need to wear my coat or like a really heavy sweatshirt and be all bundled up, it's probably going to be too cold for her. Um, so generally, they're pretty okay around 75 to 85 degrees. Usually don't want to be colder than 60 degrees, but this is really species dependent. I'm saying most tarantulas, uh, you might have an exotic tarantula that might need a little bit warmer. Um, you might have a tarantula who needs some humidity in the room. So it really depends on what kind of tarantula you have. And I will say that slings tend to be a little bit more sensitive to temperature because they are so tiny. I think the biggest concern with temperature is during the winter um, because there's a huge drop in temperature and also 
if we have storms, things like that, electricity can run out, emergencies happen, um, our place might get flooded, things, you know, things can just take place. You know, we don't necessarily want to anticipate it, but we do want to have a backup plan plan B or a plan C in case something does. So the first thing that I'll go through is I guess heating issues. So how do you um, make sure that your tarantulas stay warm during the winter? Um, you can use certain things like heating mats or pads. I personally have never used these and I don't have much knowledge about them. I do know that people tend to advise against them because they can be um, dangerous for the tarantulas. It's a lot of people say that their tarantulas can get burned, they can overheat and things like that. However, um, there are many really great advanced tarantula owners who say that they have been able to use these safely and successfully. Um, so the Tarantula Collective has a really good video about how to use heat mats safely. A lot of people have been made them more safe by using things like temperature gauges and things like that. So definitely watch that video. I'm linking it in the description below. Um, great information in there if heat mats are an option you wanna go. I personally haven't used them, like I said. What I have used, um, and this was a method that John3800 on YouTube had um, endorsed, is using a space heater. I've been doing this for years. It saved me a lot of money on my heating bill, hundreds of dollars actually on my heating bill, because um, before that I used to just blast my heat and that was incredibly expensive expensive. Um, so what I found is by using a space heater, um, it's definitely something that's been more affordable and I found it to be safe. I know that there are certain risks, but I, I do find that um, the modern ones that are being used now are pretty safe. You want to get, you want to make sure that you have a ceramic space heater so you don't want to use those ancient metal ones that are kind of dangerous now um, and you want to have one that has safety features on it too so one that shuts off if it gets to a certain temperature perhaps one that can work on a timer or that shuts off um, when it's been running for a certain amount of time and especially one that shuts off if it gets tipped over or knocked over if you have kids or pets or things like that so if you use a space heater method definitely be smart and make sure you get a modern one that has those safety features and I made a video about my setup and an article about my setup so you can check that out in the description below especially um, if you're really interested in that I will also link the John 3800 video below because he has a bunch of spiders I'm only heating up for one or two little spiders. Um, he's got a whole collection, so he uses this method for his collection. So you could um, see how I set up for my little collection and what he does for his big collection. And the next thing I wanna cover is being prepared for emergencies. So this is taking your tarantula care to the next level, being prepared for anything. Um, and you guys know, if you've been on the channel before, I really endorse being prepared for things like first aid emergencies and now um, weather emergencies are something that I think should really be covered more. So I think there's probably two disasters that we should be aware of. One are natural disasters. So this could be things like snowstorms, flooding, earthquakes if you live in a place like that, forest fires, any natural disaster where you might have to move yourself or your tarantulas from your home very, very quickly. And then of course there are man-made disasters human created things that could happen. Um, I've seen people get evicted at the last minute without much notice. Um, I've seen a last minute change in living conditions in tarantula groups. Like these things just pop up and all you have to do, all you can do is react. Um, this could even include things like a breakup or um, a falling out with a roommate or getting your power shut off and things like that. So these are not necessarily things that we can help but they are caused by humans. So you always have to be a few steps ahead in case any of these things can happen. If you're living in a place in the world where the environment's very stable, you know, you don't have a risk of forest fires. Um, like for example, I live in a city, so forest fires aren't really something that I'm worried about, nor are earthquakes. Um, or flooding and things like that. However, I could have a storm. My power could get cut off. And if you also live in a really stable personal life, that's wonderful too. You know, if you uh, have your own house and you have a really great job so you don't have to worry about getting evicted or your bills not being paid, that's also great. But you never just wanna take those things for granted. You always wanna have some sort of plan. And if your life isn't set up like that, you definitely wanna make sure that 
you ha can talk to family or friends and see who you can rely on in case that you do live in a in a place where you might have an earthquake or suffer a forest fire or, a fire or things like that. So you can make a backup plan by talking to family and friends and you might want to just discuss, hey, in case of an emergency, are you somebody that I can count on to temporarily watch or house my tarantulas and pets in case I need to relocate or recover from an emergency. This might also include things like having a backup generator in case your power goes out. So you could do things on the technological side and you could also do things on the support side to make sure that you have all your bases covered. Richard Stewart in his video says that he has a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. And in his plan C, I think it was, um, he made this really great um, suggestion that you could actually temporarily, if you have to, house your tarantulas in a storage unit. And I didn't know that they did this kind of thing, but he said they actually have temperature controlled storage units. So that might take some looking into. You don't want to be looking that up at the last minute because I didn't know that they were temperature controlled storage units. So um, you might have to do some digging to kind of find a place that does that and it might be expensive, I'm not sure, but it's cool to know that that's an option. So that is also another thing that you could do. You know, if you have to relocate or you need to move your tarantula somewhere temporarily and you can't rely on any family or friends, a storage unit is an option. Um, as long as you can control the temperature. Other really good things to do um, as far as backup is not only to have like a backup um, electrical supply or something like that or heating supply, but also having things like backup substrate, backup um, water, food, things like that. And I'm not talking about for you. Like, yes, you should have stuff for you, but I'm talking about for the spiders. You should have their food. Um, a lot of, now luckily, it's really easy to kind of have your own colony of roaches. A lot of tarantula owners do do this anyway, or to buy a bunch of worms at once. Um, I have found that in my um, switching from different foods for tarantulas, the roaches are certainly the most hardy and easy to create your own colony. Right now I have an accidental colony because Spidey went through this period of not eating. So now my what started with five roaches has now turned into like 20. <laughs> I have a lot of babies right now. So if you are thinking about that, um, I have personally found that worms die pretty quickly and so do crickets. Uh, they'll either eat each other or they won't reproduce fast enough or they'll just die and get weird and sick and gross. So um, my suggestion if you are trying to have like a backup plan is to start with roaches. Um, not only for the nutritious elements, because they are very nutritious for tarantulas, but also because I find that they live longer, they're really, really hardy, and they tend to reproduce faster. So that's my take on that. You might also want to have backup huge Rubbermaid containers, because if you ever have to transport um, your tarantulas really fast, you could put a bunch of your little containers and enclosures in one big Tupperware. So that might be something that you could do. I think that's a really great idea. I think Richard also said that in his video. So I hope that was helpful and gives you guys kind of like a guideline of things to think about when you're trying to be prepared for things. Um, a lot of times we don't know what's gonna happen. Um, as much as we believe that we live in stable areas of the world and we believe our lives are stable generally, um, we never know. I mean, right now, um, new things are developing about the coronavirus every single day and we might be in a situation where we can't go to the store a lot and so it's good to just be prepared because sometimes we don't really know what's coming so um, I hope that this gives you more food for thought at least for um, your pets because I know that for a lot of us um, our pets bring us so much joy and we would do anything for them and while of course we do need to take care of ourselves and our loved ones, our pets really are like our family members. And um, you know, spider or not, they're really, really important. And so I know that that's something that really is important and matters to you guys. So I thought that this might be helpful. Um, so in short, it's all about being prepared and thinking about all the possibilities and not leaving it to chance. You know, anytime we say, oh, that'll never happen, a lot of times it, it does or something similar happens or you know sometimes we just don't know we can't predict so um, it's just good to have these things in your mind have a plan a plan b and plan c have people that you can call on to help 
have certain resources that you can use and supplies you can use in case of an emergency and you will be very thankful in case anything does come up because you will be ready for it and your pets will be safe. If you've been in any Tarantula Facebook group, I'm sure that you've seen somebody go through an emergency that they never thought would happen and were definitely not prepared for. So let's just avoid that stuff and think about getting all of our bases covered. I would honestly hate to see more tarantula owners have to give away their entire collection or sell it off super quickly when they didn't want to just because they didn't have a plan. So that's why I'm sharing this because that always breaks my heart when I see somebody in a tarantula group going through that. And I can only imagine the pain that that person is going through, um, you know, wanting to give their tarantulas a decent life, but being under a severe amount of stress and stress and not having any other options. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you have any other tips about how to deal with emergencies or extreme weather, please let me know. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.